the guy that's getting replaced is uh, the guy that's getting replaced is Stringer, the guy that's going to that went to Microsoft is in charge of the Sony Europe or Sony Computer Entertainment Europe, whatever that was. Oh yeah, and he screwed that up pretty badly. Uh, yeah. Phil, right. uh, Phil Harrison. Yeah. We're gonna have to do some formal podcast now because I'm about ready to start. So what, do you, Russ? Do you want to just do the podcast uh, intro? Are you recording now, or? I'm gonna do right now. Uh, 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 okay, um... Hey, that was a start fail. Hold on, let me sign <laughs> <inside> this. <laughs> He's going to do that every time you... Yeah, but we're trying to do the intro to the podcast on top of the video recording, too, so... <laughs> so we got to do the intro for the Okay, well, uh, we are trying to do something new. We're trying to actually do a podcast this time, and I'm sure it's going to fail horribly in the beach balls of death, but in the hopes that it doesn't, and we actually get a video recording over here, too, that doesn't glitch, uh, we'll figure out where the devil to distribute that. So, uh, okay, um, I guess this, I this... I, I think I might introduce themselves. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, it's... it's it, Hey, uh, you know, what, what the heck are we calling me? The show that sucks so rusty. <laughs> the host is rusty, so say hello, uh, Co-host. <laughs> uh, I'm Mr. Bitter, known as Marcel, and then the other two guys, Bob, decided. Yes, Bob <laughs> comes from the net and hates Windows fanboys. <laughs> he's, he's known as Mr. Mox. <laughs> I'll get into you with your Windows 8 thing. <laughs> and, um... This idea is yeah. silent. I, I call him Captain Video Game. <laughs> Say something. Well, I know about Apple, too. Okay. <laughs> Alright. So where are we at? Uh, well, you were wanting to start with... Blizzard this this? Yeah, like you will be able to play WoW on your iPhone. <laughs> okay, the actual game is right now four gigs. Well, so that ain't gonna happen. Well, but didn't the Android Marketplace just up the like limit to like four gigs? Yeah. Yeah, you know what? And now there's another update. I think it's called Miss Pandora. It's gonna really raise it to five gigs. Okay, so you'll download four gig, and then you'll download the update. That's two four gig apps. Gee, it sounds like smartphones are becoming more and more like computers. Yeah, but, but think about how much that would cost on the bandwidth cap. That's going to make, wow, 50 bucks plus the price. Oh. Dude, it's already a bitch to just download World of Warcraft all right now. <laughs> uh. Can you imagine, like, your phone dies in the middle of downloading that, so the moment you boot it up, it resumes downloading and charges you more money? <laughs> uh, Mr. Bendy, show notes. Oh, yeah. Craig. <laughs> well, you see, this is his fault, because if I sent him to him ahead of time, he can't find it. In, he can't find his email. <laughs> so, it's, uh... <laughs> That's not, I don't know. There's something fishy about all that. Yeah, no, it's, I, I, I've given up adding him ahead of time like I do everybody else because he he's like, you know, it's add me again. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> but well, now, yeah, Chuck, Chuck. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I, I'm just trying to keep there from being uh, uh, audio break since we're doing podcasts. We can't have our um moments. We always have um moments, but we have to talk now. There will oh. be no umming. How about this whole Netflix what about why, why, why Netflix's Facebook app would be illegal? Yeah, it's, that's weird. Um, basically, uh, in the 1980s, 
Yes, we are in the 80s 2.0, truly, because the 19... Oh. The 1980s. Yeah, we are in the 80s 2.0, especially now that Total Recall is being made. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're rebooting the 80s, and the 1980s are deciding what laws apply in the 80s. Basically, in the 1980s, somebody went to a video rental store and was able to convince somebody, some stupid clerk, to give away someone's rental history. So, you know, people went before the Supreme Court and argued, you know, you can't do that, that's privacy violations. So there's a ruling on the books and a law that was pushed through Congress and coincided and everything else that basically says you can't do this, it's a crime. And because Facebook, how Facebook works, if there's a Netflix app through Facebook and the metrics would get shared, the rental history and the videos you view through Netflix would get shared with the Facebook metrics. It would be in violation of this 1980s law. Uh, uh, okay, just as, then wouldn't Boxy violate that because it gives a of what your friends view? Ah, that but that's experience? different because Boxy is a media service. Why Facebook would be looked up on like the video store? You see, it's uh, it, it, it's one of those. Yes, it's the exact same thing, but. Well, once again, the law has not cut up to the lovely sea of new technology. So, you know, that's... Yeah. And yet again, we're 30 years too late. <laughs> yeah! That, and doesn't that make you feel just nice? <laughs> it's, like... it's great knowing we have technology laws that are based off of when I was born. That's awesome. Well, but, <laughs> well, but you know what's really bad? I mean, that's like the law where... What is it? The cops in California were saying... If I was you're born in the 70s. Yeah, uh, I mean, you have cops saying recording them, and they're they're quoting like wire tapping laws and regulations. It's like again, you know, it, it, you know what? If we go by the laws of the '70s and the '80s uh, that were made to deal with technology, I guarantee you, almost every freaking thing we do is illegal. <laughs> we're all criminals. Oh, it's like the wire. What else is now? Um. Well, you know, continuing in the same stupid note, um, Congress and everybody else is going privacy mad. I mean, they're trying to take a second look at the privacy bill of rights and stuff. By the way, I still don't have the nuts. You still? <laughs> How many times are you? Okay, I added you. I think now, now it shows up. <laughs> Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> I blame it on Google Docs. Yes, I do too. I blame it on the fact that he linked it to a Google account, which he's now closed, which is probably creating delays. Man, Netflix is on everything. Except Facebook. <laughs> yeah, well, so much for Facebook. But yep. then again, uh, Netflix has recently announced that they're going to be on the PS Vita and the Nintendo 3DS. I, I honestly, right, I think that's going. Netflix business model to become yeah, the de facto yeah, standard yeah. everywhere, so they can't be killed or go away. Because Here's an idea. how about they go to desktop Linux, even though it's one percent of the market share, according to that? No, that, didn't you hear? They announced that they're actually building um, support for that now. No. Yeah, they said in 2012. Then they come out later in the year saying, "Oh, no support for Linux this year." Yeah, but they're not dropping it. They're just saying it's going to take us a little longer than we thought to compile that app to make sure it works everywhere. They're, they are still pursuing it. They do. I know. And their rival Hulu is doing the same thing now, too. Mm-hmm. They're going to be on the 3DS and PS Vita and Linux. Yeah, well, and you know... They're going to be on everything. Uh, well, and the fact that they're all running to support Linux means they get that this is the... <laughs> You know, this is where media is going, and they better be. And whoever doesn't go everywhere is gonna lose. You have, you have to be the agnostic that goes everywhere thing. Otherwise, you open the door for anybody else to come in and go. Hi, have you been rejected by de facto hub? I we don't reject you, and we have all the same content. Put them out of business. Oh, and did we mention we're ten percent less? <laughs> They know that if they allow that to happen, they're dead. Anyways, getting back into the, uh, continuing with the privacy string, because 
bid ass what else was new. What do y'all think about the fact that they're um, pushing for basically um, an equivalent to the Fair Credit Reporting Act for privacy and data mining? Actually, my statement about what else is new is when you had said, well, we're all criminals. So I was being funny. I was supposed to have been funny. Anyway. Uh, uh, no. It was, you know. Well, what's wrong with yeah. being a criminal? I, I, I see it went over well yet again. All right, so, uh, <laughs> so what are you talking about, some credit bot now? Uh, it's not, well, it, it basically uh, the idea there is uh, like the Fair Credit Reporting Act gives you access to the, creates a set of laws that say, hi, um, you have a right to have access to the information that's being presented to you in terms of credit. Uh, this is the, the what they're trying to put together is an equivalent set of laws that will govern your ID profile. So with all the data mining and stuff that everybody's doing on you from Facebook to Google to SOT, they're basically saying, hi, these record, uh, if these laws go through, it's going to say these records have to be available on demand for you to critique and audit and verify accuracy. Uh, I have very mixed feelings about that. I mean, on the one hand, we need it. On the other hand, we're going to create the same thing we did with the credit profiles, you know, a few centralized hubs, which make it even easier than it is now to get this information on people. So, I don't know where y'all stand on that. Good, bad, are our legislators trying to get elected? The, 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 the latter. <laughs> This? What? Bob, this? Either one of you have anything to say on that? I'm going to wait to see how badly they screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honestly wondering if it isn't going to be one of those things like it's done with the best of intentions. Uh, like the regulations that say you have to give that, that you have to put identifying information in your mailbox for people to go steal. I mean, I, I kind of laugh at the fact that the two best friends for ID theft are the United States government and the United States government regulations. I just kind of have to laugh at that. I'm like, huh. That's, and if, if they continue in that strain, this is just going to be a whole new little harvester field for screwing with people's lives. Well, yeah, Hulu's already on Facebook. Yeah, and I wonder how Hulu gets away with that without Netflix. Yeah. I, I cause Netflix can't, because Netflix can't they'll be in violation, but Hulu somehow, I guess because Hulu isn't looked upon as a rental service? You know, uh, Google's got their own rental service now. They got that play thing. Can you guys know it's the top of your uh, Google search bars? Yeah, I, I, I saw that that Google had added the play thing up there. I, I don't, you know, I don't think it's gonna make it succeed. It, it's yeah. just, it, it's, I don't, I don't know. Ugh. Oh look, the senators are after Facebook. Uh, and the, f you know what? I, I swear, you know we're in an election year. Senators are after f Facebook, the FTC is after Sonic, and you know now we have all the other crap. Oh no! Who the hell's typing this? <laughs> well, at least they, uh, at least you got your form. Yeah, which one? Oh no! <laughs> For those of you who are wondering what's going on, our Windows fanboy, who has been anti-Angry Birds for as long as we can remember, <laughs> apparently has played Angry Birds, but has, de but has declared that it sucks. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't understand what the phenomenon is. And even my, even my kids don't really like it. You know, I bought it, and I said, okay, here it is, because remember, I, on the other show, I had said, uh, you know, I bought it, and I said, okay, here it is, because remember, on the other show, I had said that my mother-in-law came back from Guatemala with these Angry Bird toys, and I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> So, so uh, I actually okay. Here's the, here's the game, and, and I loved it. My my oldest son says, "Yeah, my toys are more fun." So I, I was just so. I, I, if I, if I, you're I, asking me to explain it, 
I, I, I don't know, because uh, apparently it's supposed to be, like, difficult or hard or, or like, like so, but, yeah. I don't know what it's so fascinating. I, I guess you pull it back on the slingshot with your oh-so-lovely touch device, and it flings a damn bird, and, and whatever the hell it is, it breaks it. Breaks yeah. It and kills something. Different birds do things. And, Wonderful. Yeah. Well, it's just... Just a, I call it another uh, fla uh, flavor of the month or flavor of the year. I mean, before that it was uh, Plants vs. Zombies. And before that yeah. it was Pokemon. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Angry Birds reminds me of that old uh, cannon or tank game back in the old days. You used to play them on the Apple II. And it would be like sitting on the hill and you had to hit the, hit the castle and you'd do elevation and velocity. That has been made fun of by more things. It's exactly what the hell Angry Birds I, I, I know that. It's exactly what it is. I just don't know. I can't remember what the game's name was. I, I, oh, God. It, it, I think it was in an episode of Reboot. Well, there was a game that came out not that long ago called Crush the Castle, which was pretty much the same thing. But what makes Crush the Castle so interesting is that it came out before Angry Birds. Yet somehow Angry Birds is the thing that is everywhere. T-shirts, uh, 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 No, the freaking the Easter Isle in the stupid Wally World down here. I walk in there, and apparently kids are having Angry Bird and Piggy plushies for Easter, and I'm like, oh. Do you know what it is, or it's just become it's just become a cool. Well, it's dying out now because of that new game called Angry. So what, now we're going to have birds in astronaut suits? No, superhero costumes, actually. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. I can see it now. We're going to have, in the, in the game called, like, Angry Bird Zero G or something, so we're going to have floating Angry Birds in all the stores now. <laughs> they already have one that floats. Oh, no. They just put a new one out. <sighs> yeah, no, but that, what I mean is, because you go into the stores everywhere, and there's the little Angry Bird plushies everywhere. So it's like, what are we, what is the display now going to be? Hover birds? You know, they're just floating around. <laughs> You're gonna walk in the store, and then five birds are gonna float around you now. <laughs> I don't know. It's just. So does that mean we? Shut them at all the people we don't. I mean, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, getting into something that is at least of substance because none of us comprehend Angry Birds. I've played it, I've beaten it, and I still don't get it. <laughs> You've beaten it? Wow. Well, I, 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 I got all the golden eggs and I did all the rounds. Oh my gosh, see now? So it's like shit from Facebook. With Golden Eggs is now appearing in, in Angry Birds, is what you're telling me? I don't know what the Golden Eggs oh, mean. Like golden Eggs. That's, I mean, it's, they're all, it's all over the place now. We've got them on Facebook, and now you're telling me on Angry Birds. Well, there are Golden Eggs in these, what is it, the zombie games, too? <laughs> oh, it actually started with most uh, games that start on Xbox where you had the Easter, Easter Eggs. Yeah. So then, yeah, it's like, they, I think that's what it's about. It's like, hi, these are your Easter eggs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Um, in, in our new category... What? 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 Bob had something to say and he, he cut himself short. Go ahead, Bob. No, just go to the next topic. <laughs> no, no, you said it now. Go. He started... Oh, I was just going to say, we're going to move on because none of us care about really angry birds. Well said. Popular for now. Uh, give it a couple of years. It'll fade out. Well, they all fade years? out. Anyways, moving on to something else that will hopefully fade out. TV and game platforms. Um... Uh, I, you know, I have mixed feelings about this crap. Apparently, Comcast people cannot make use of HBO Go. Uh, and 
I don't know how to feel about that because the, in my opinion, HBO Go as a whole is a failure because you have to still buy HBO from the cable and satellite companies to get HBO Go. And the whole point of these on-demand devices or putting it on your Xbox or whatever is screw the cable and satellite company. I don't need you. You're a glorified middleman. Yeah. Uh, yeah HBO goes out on the iOS, by the way. And I think Android. It's everywhere, like Netflix. It's like it, the Xbox is just the latest place for it to go. I mean, it's on the... But you have to be a subscriber to get it, correct? What it is, is you have to have gotten HBO through a supported television distributor. And and the, and then that distributor has to allow you to participate in HBO Go. Yeah, Which, CNN has a uh, app that has a streaming part of it, but not for to get the streaming part, you have to have the same exact thing. Yeah, and I'm like, guys, you're completely missing the point. The whole point here is you can sell it to us and keep the money for yourself. You don't have to go through them. You're missing the... I mean, I should. you should be able to go to like HBO.com or whatever the heck it is for HBO and go, yeah, I don't have any TV, but I want to give y'all $5.95 a month or $9.95 or whatever the hell it is because I just want y'all. I like your shit. I don't know why they hold on to these cable companies, because even Hulu does the same thing. I mean, if you want to catch the latest episode of Fringe, you know, you have to have a direct TV code. Um, no, I don't. I, I have Hulu Plus on my... Oh, wait, no, uh, I meant, uh, uh, if you want to catch the show before it airs on television, Oh, I don't care about before it airs. Like, and, and honestly, if they want to put that, like, 48-hour delay or week delay or whatever in there, that's fine. You know, it's the same thing they used to do, they've done for years. It's like, okay, the movie's out in the theater. Go run to the movie theater. Okay, oh, the movie's out on pay-per-view. Okay, you know, it's like, eventually it comes out. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, is that if you want to catch it a week before, you have to have a direct TV code from your direct TV, and it's like, why? Am I paying for this? It, I, I, I don't know. It, that, that doesn't make any sense, especially with the week before thing. I mean, that's... I know, kind of stupid. Well, when who, who's going to do that? I mean, it, it, I, I'm sorry. The reality is this stuff is replacing TV, and the people who don't get on board with that are going to be, become obsolete. I mean... I got rid of my TV, and it's really the why I don't have everything I had. I found, oh, well, the things that aren't cooperating with me getting rid of my TV, I don't care about anymore. Because <laughs> they're not in the medium I'm using. You know, they're, they're fighting me. Okay, fine. Screw you. <laughs> well, I... Well, I can just watch Netflix or Hulu on there, so... No, no, that's what I mean, though. That's the thing. I would gladly buy HBO Go, but I am not going to spend the $100 plus to then give HBO 5 bucks. I would gladly give HBO 10 bucks to not give to not give somebody else 100 bucks to be allowed to give HBO 5 bucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's... It, it's, it's the... It's that math that they don't get. They're like, well, we only cost five dollars. No, you cost a hundred and five dollars. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I mean, HBO and Cinemax and all of them are starting to become more, less and less, uh, more and more up obsolete. Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, this is like their last ditch to save themselves because if they wait to get on board with cutting out the middlemen and, and putting their uh, content that is purely theirs that they produce, like the shows they produce and like the Borges or the things like that, if they wait until the point that they're forced to, by then, they're all out of business. They need to do it now while we're still kind of dependent on them. Otherwise, they've just sown the seeds for their obsolescence. 
Yeah, there are other devices that aren't gaming devices. You can watch it. Well, yeah, like I said, like we said, all of them pretty much. But the the problem is that you have to already have bought that you have to buy them through the traditional means to get them on the non traditional means, which it is increasingly less. I mean, you complained about this bit, the fact that you have how many channels and how many of them do you actually watch? Exactly, absolutely. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. Uh, I think the the amount that we have to basically pay and, and cover uh, whatever package you get, right? They say three hundred channels, blah blah blah. You're gonna you're probably gonna use seven or, or ten or whatever. So just you know, I, I think it's just useless and. These main stations, do they not subsidize these other offshoot channels and things like that? Or, uh, I, Well, I don't know how that actually works. I, I, I always wondered that why, like, even if you're buying from the cable company, why you can't go, yeah, I don't want basic cable, I just want HBO, or I just want Showtime, or I just, or, or I just want whatever. No, sir, first you have to get our basic package, then you have to get our extended basic, then our super basic, and then, then you can add movie channels. Like, right. <laughs> Give yourself a million dollars. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's what I'm getting at with this whole covering thing, is that they're, oh, we need to, uh, we want to push some sort of channel, which I, I have in the past done some research where I, obviously they're, I guess you call them daughter channels or whatever, but if you don't want them, why are we needing to pay for these packages, I guess, in, to subsidize these types of channels? It just doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make a lot of sense to anybody else lately now that we can stream all this shit. No, we that's the see. thing. It, it, it's The other thing that I, I laugh at is more and more of the cable companies, and I think DirecTV's doing it now too, but I haven't had DirecTV in a long time, so, but I heard they were doing this, is they're... They're starting to embrace the idea of on-demand. I say starting because what they do is they tease you by putting the, like, five shows up of the dozen you want to watch, and it's only two episodes, and then I go on Netflix or Hulu, and for the most part, I have every freaking episode. So it's like, okay, so you don't even get that right. You know, it's... You know what the really funny part is? <laughs> on Netflix, if you look for HBO or Showtime shows, you'll find them on there. It's last season shows, but there they are. Yeah, because the DVDs have been released. Which Netflix has access to and Netflix has streaming to. Now, that's created a conflict rub, because for the longest time... Stars was giving the content they had access to to Netflix, uh, and Disney cried bloody murder. <laughs> Which is why, if like uh, people who have Netflix, if you notice, all the Disney stuff is gone. It's because Disney never gave it to Netflix; they gave it to Stars, who turned around and gave it to Netflix. <laughs> You know what? If Disney doesn't like that, Disney needs to make their own um, digital on-demand channel, host it, and distribute it. I was gonna say we're getting to the point now where everything it's starting to become a la carte. Yeah. Pick what you want, pay what the you know price for admission is. There you go. Well, and I can accept that there it isn't going to be under one hub. You're going to have. I look at Netflix and Hulu as the equivalent of basic cable. They're your hubs that have the majority of stuff, but not everything. I can see certain content like the BBC, certain aspects of the Canadian broadcast. I want to say channel or corporation or whatever the hell it is. You know, Canada's equivalent of the BBC. Um, certain. Uh, things maybe Disney will become a premium account again. You know, way back in the day, they used to be a premium channel, uh, and, and you know HBO and Show could maybe maintain that status for their shows they do, not for the movies, but they could maintain it for the shows they do. But it's got to be like a, a reasonable add-on price, like a few dollars uh, a month or something, where instead of your bill being 
uh, 25 a month it is to get Netflix and Hulu combined. It's like, okay, I, I, want, one of, I want a premium account, so I'm going to spend an extra two to five bucks on them. And now I'm spending 30 a month, not I have to spend a hundred for the permission to give you five to ten bucks. It isn't going to fly. It'll just be, okay, fine. I don't care how good your content is. It's not worth 120 bucks. <laughs> I just, yeah, I just want a a la carte thing like we're discussing the show, so it, we can never get to that. We're 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 almost there if if people will just stop trying to prop up the old cable model. It's really the few people trying to do that, <laughs> kicking and screaming, who are the only reason we're not there right now. You know what? I, I know when we'll be there. We will be there when I can watch my Babylon 5. <laughs> Isn't that on Netflix? No. Yes, it is. I thought it was. It's, it's, it used to be. I was going to say, I think it is right now. Right? But it's not streaming. What? I, I, I could have sworn that Babylon 5 was on, on the direct demand, whatever, blah, blah. It's rival back in the day, which lost, which very pretty. Uh, so, and that, I, I've looked for it a few times. I haven't seen it. I mean, it could have been taken off. Look, Netflix has had things on as digital and then taken them off, you know, as digital. So, yes, it is off now. I just I went and checked. But yeah, I, I'm going to say, I looked for that the other day. Don't, don't, don't toy with me. <laughs> but it was. It was at one time. It was at one time. Yeah, well, it isn't now. <laughs> well, what I was saying was that its rival show, even though it fared pretty well, uh, even though Babylon 5 turned out to be better when Star Trek Deep Space Nine is up, still up there. Oh, yeah. no, all the Star Trek's still on there. It's just nice. I like that. And Deep Space Nine was the best of them all. So, yes, that's really like good to know. But, I, I, yeah, I, I'm partial to Enterprise, though. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, you know, you you missed it. This I don't know if you ever watched the video. I'm still surprised YouTube hasn't taken it down. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I, I, I said, well, I, I like the plot of Enterprise. I like all the stuff, but I'm sorry. I will forever. Every time I see Scott Bakula in anything, I'm just gonna go. And he stepped into the quantum leap accelerator. Oh, <laughs> Christ. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's just what I think of when I see Scott Bakula. I can't think of anything else. They're supposed to be making a movie of it. Oh, are you kidding me? Yeah. yeah I hope but... so. I mean, look, I like Enterprise because it was, it was a Star Trek without the damned Federation. It just seems to me that Star Trek became more and more politically correct. It drove, it was, it drove me crazy. And uh, I liked uh, a sci-fi world based in a Star Trek universe where you, you could have some real ethical questions, which I think were really brought up in that show. That they did. They did have some of that. But, it would, but I, I think t the, the next generation had too much of it. Um, Voyager was, was off and on. But it was nice to be able to see, all right, Here's a crew that really has no guidelines whatsoever, and really the only this only authoritative entity or, or body is the Vulcans, which I found interesting. Which they enjoy uh, fucking with. Yeah, they we were in conflict. I, I just enjoyed that whole different realm, and it was nice to see the that the, the Vulcans have, actually have a, a quasi civil war. You know. Uh, yes, Vulcans the, don't mind them. <laughs> Enterprise. I also like a ship that wasn't just that could get the ship kicked out of it. Uh, and he had found mm -hmm. interesting ways to, to try to escape. That some. was really the only good. This is one of the reasons I always liked the Klingon Birds of Prey because it, it's 
It's a little 12 man ship that is minimal and really can't hang in in a fight, but somehow it's badass. It, it's. Yeah. Well, it's heavily armed. And, and, and from what we've learned also in Enterprise, the, the earlier versions were heavily armored. Yeah. So they could have been armored in space. Yeah. I think those were actually raptors, but they call them vertebrae. That's like is weird. That's a little inconsistency there, but who cares? <laughs> but I I don't know. It's to trek or not to trek. That is the question. But well, always the, Babylon Five. I'm just gonna say the best Star Trek series still would be the original and Deep Space Nine. No, oh, I'm, I'm always going to have a fond place for the original, but I went back and looked back and I realized it's only three years long. I mean, it's the shortest of all the series, and it's just... <laughs> no, Enterprise is now. No! No, Enterprise is four. Enterprise was four years. The original Star Trek was only three, and they didn't really even finish the third year. Well, that's um, because uh, EPN finally quit. Uh, uh, it was closing its tours back right then. Yeah, I, 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 I have always wondered what would have happened to Star Trek if Gene Roddenberry had had the money. Because um, when Paramount killed Star Trek, the way, way back, you know, before its revival... Hey, before... I, I, I'm stopping the podcast real quick because it's like too much Star Trek. But anyway... <laughs> hey! Hold on, I want, also wanted to test the uh, audio. Well... Well, we've already seen Gene Roddenberry's full Star Trek, the motion picture, which bombed. No, that's not what I mean. But that was all Roddenberry, by the way, behind the original Star Trek. Nobody liked it. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to get at, but Bit stopped the recording, so I won't. <laughs> Is the audio working bit? Hold on. This is like it. God, we got recorded a shitload of audio. Hold on. About 40 minutes. I got a Hot Wheel car of kit. I recorded your voice is perfectly, but mine not. Yeah, you're running into the same bullshit I have here. <laughs> Back to the Future DeLorean. That and Kit. Never Yep. Yeah. I was Yeah. Well, well, what I was going to get into at the Star Trek is when they when Paramount killed Star Trek, they offered Gene Roddenberry. He basically he could have owned Star Trek right out for less than the cost of an episode. It would have been his. He would have had complete and total control of it. And I just wonder if Star Trek would have ever been reborn, because like what you're talking about with Star Trek the motion picture. Because it's like, the way Gene Roddenberry was great, Gene Roddenberry's true envisioning, why it does great in books, doesn't really fit the cinematic experience. Well, actually, it really wasn't him that was uh, how, going through the whole reimagining of Star Trek. Well, I, I, I swear they were making fun of that in Deep Space Nine with the Paul Wraith visions. Actually, uh, Next Generation was what Gene Roddenberry really wanted out of Star Trek. In the yeah. First... yeah, he wanted to touch... Well, uh, the, and Next Generation was the rest of his scripts. Yeah. It, when they started it, those first two seasons were the rest of the original Star Trek scripts. Yeah, some of them were not too good. Yeah. Hi, we're going to go look at the Naked again. <sighs> okay. Are you making tweaks, Bit? Yeah, I'm sure you are. Okay. <laughs> I hate Twitter. Why? I don't know. I just don't care for something that says type in all the doing it in your life, moment by moment by moment. Well, you know, it's good. It's a good way for yes. people to contribute content and stuff. 
Who? Hey, hold on a second. Here, hold on, let me test this audio. I gotta mute you. Nice. Ben loves Twitter. <laughs> I do. I do like it. Well, no, see, but the difference is Ben actually tweets relevant information. It, 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 it's and he doesn't like tweet every little thing he does. He's like, oh, I found something interesting that y'all may like. Let me tweet it. <laughs> Uh, which means he goes days between tweets at times. As opposed to people who are like, I am tying my shoes. My dog threw up. I have coughed. I sneezed when I looked at the sun. <laughs> so I'm like, um, you know what? That's not interesting. Shut up. I mean, there are some people who are good enough at it they can make anything they tweet interesting and they can do it a dozen times a day. But that's... I'm sorry, that's not most people. Man, they got special links for Twitter now to shorten out links like tiny URL. Actually, those have largely that's become... been around for a while. Yeah, those aren't anything new and they're largely become obsolete. The bit.ly and tiny URL links are now that Twitter allows URLs... Yeah, it kind of does it on its own, it? Yeah, you don't even really need that anymore. Yeah, they were basically built to deal with the character cap thing because you, how do you fit a URL that's longer than 140 characters into a 140 character cap? But that's now doesn't count and it's not done anymore, so yeah, you don't need any of those anymore. And I'm kind of glad to see those die because at least now I know what I'm fucking clicking on. Yeah. Hi, go to this thing that's not this. Wait a minute, that's not that thing. going to accept the fake ending as the ending of the game, and then I'll never buy the sequels because it won't match the timeline. That'll backfire on them if they do that. Well, they've done it three times in three different games. Yeah, I know. I'm going to the PAX panel, so that'll be interesting to see. You know, the only one that I've seen in which that makes any sense whatsoever is the way Half-Life did the episodic stuff where yeah, you have the time council guys in there basically going, wait a minute, this isn't the ending we want, this is how we continue our chapter. They, yeah, and what's even more fun here? There's DLC in the uh, iOS devices and Androids. But the iOS requires you make those DLCs free. You're telling me I have to thank Apple? Yeah. 
<laughs> Apple basically says, we're not going to make you um, screw customers over and put new words. How do do that? Where the, I was going to say, we're the only ones that can do that. We're Apple. Yeah. <laughs> if they're going to get Shinola and rammed up the tailpipe, it's going to be because we said so. <laughs> but all the DLCs for like Infinity Play 2 is not done yet, but yet and they have to make all that shit free for their customers. Because it comes part of the basic download of the update service. Okay, hang on a minute. I'm going to put a hash in here. 